Canto 32, Circle 9, Cositas, Compound Fraud, Round 1, Caina, the Treacherous to Kin, Round 2, Antenora, the Treacherous to Country. If I had rhymes as harsh and horrible as the hard fact of that final dismal hole which bears the weight of all the steeps of hell, I might more fully press the sap and substance from my conception, but... Since I must do without them, I begin with some reluctance. For it is no easy undertaking, I say, to describe the bottom of the universe, nor is it for tongues that only babble child's play. But may those ladies of the heavenly spring who helped Amphion wall Thebes assist my verse, that the word may be the mirror of the thing. O oh, miscreant rabble, you who keep the stations of that place whose name is pain, Better had you been born as goats or sheep. We stood now in the dark pit of the well, far down the slope below the giant's feet, and while I still stared up at the great wall, I heard a voice cry, Watch which way you turn. Take care you do not trample on the heads of the forewarn and the miserable brethren. Whereat I turned and saw beneath my feet, and stretching out ahead, a lake so frozen it seemed to be made of glass. So thick a sheet never yet hid the Danube's winter course, nor far away beneath the frigid sky locked the dawn up in its frozen source. For were Tanbernic and the enormous peak of Pietrapana to crash down on it, not even the edges would so much as crack. The way frogs sit to croak, their muzzles leaning out of the water, at the time and season when the peasant woman dreams of her day's gleaning. Just so the livid dead were sealed in place up to the part at which they blushed for shame and they beat their teeth like storks. Each holds his face bowed toward the ice. Each of them testifies to the cold with his chattering mouth, to his heart's grief with tears that flood forever from his eyes. When I had stared about me. I looked down, and at my feet I saw two clamped together so tightly that the hair of their heads had grown together. Who are you, I said, and who lies so tightly breast to breast? They strained their necks, and when they had raised their heads as if to reply, the tears their eyes had managed to contain up to that time gushed out and the cold froze them between the lids, sealing them shut again, tighter than any clamp grips wood to wood. And mad with pain, they fell to butting heads like billy goats on a sudden savage mood. And a wraith, who lay to one side and below, and who had lost both ears to frostbite, said, his head still bowed, Why do you watch us so? If you wish to know who they are who share one doom, they own the Byzantios Valley with their father, whose name was Albert. They sprang from one womb, and you may search through all kindness crew without discovering in all this waste a squab more fit for the aspic than these two. Not him whose breast and shadow a single blow of the great lance of King Arthur pierced with light, nor yet Focaccia's nor this one fastened into the ice, that his head is all I see. And whom, if you are Tuscan, you know well his name on earth was Sasso Mascherioni. And I, to tell you all, and so be through, was Commission de Pazzi. I wait for Carlin, besides whose guilt my sins will shine like virtue. And leaving him, I saw a thousand faces, discolored so by cold. I shudder yet, and always will, when I think of those frozen places. As we approached the center of all weight, where I went shivering in eternal shade, whether it was my will or chance or fate, I cannot say. But as I trailed my guide among those heads, my foot struck violently against the face of one. Weeping, it cried, Why do you kick me? If you were not sent to... To wreck, to wreak a further vengeance for Montepetti, why do you add this to my other torment? Master, I said, grant me a moment's pause to rid myself of a doubt concerning this one. Then you may hurry me at your own pace. 
the master stopped at once, and through the volley of foul abuse, the wretch poured out. I said, who are you who curse others so? And he, and who are you who go through the dead larder of Antonora, kicking the cheeks of others so hard that were you alive, you could not kick harder? I am alive, I said. And if you seek fame, it may be precious to you above all else that my notes on this descent include your name. Exactly the opposite is my wish and hope, he answered. Let me be, for it's little you know of how to flatter on this icy slope. I grabbed the hair of his dog's ruff and I said, Either you tell me truly who you are or you won't have a hair left on your head. And he... Not though you snatch me bald, I swear I will not tell my name nor show my face, not though you rip until my brain lies bare. And I had a good grip on his hair. Already I had yanked out more than one fistful of it, while the wretch yelped, but I kept his face turned for me, but he kept his face turned for me. When another said, Boca, what is it ails you? What the hell's wrong? Isn't it bad enough to here you bang your jaws. You must bark, too. Now, filthy traitor, say no more, I cried, for your shame. Be sure I will shall bear back a true report of you. The wretch replied, Say anything you please, but go away. And if you do get back, don't overlook that pretty one who had so much to say just now. Here he laments the Frenchman's price. I saw Boso da duera you can report where the bad salad is kept crisp on ice and if you're asked who else was wintering here becaria whose throat was slit by florence is here beside you johnny de Solandier is further down i think with ganelon and tebaldello who opened the gates of faenza and let bologna steal in with the dawn. Leaving him then, I saw two souls together in a single hole, so pinched in by the ice that one had made a helmet for the other. As a famished man chews crusts, so one sinner sank his teeth into the other's nape, at the base of the skull gnawing his loathsome dinner. Tideus, in his final raging hour, gnawed Menelippus's head with no more fury than this one gnawed at the skull in dripping gore. You there, I said, who show so odiously your hatred for that other. Tell me why on this condition, that if in what you tell me you seem to have a reasonable complaint against him, you devour with such foul relish, I, knowing who you are and his soul's taint, may speak your cause to living memory, God willing the power of speech be left to me.